friends i as i interact with you uh, through the end to end optical network of high bandwidth i see the contribution of university of california san diego and the indian team uh, towards the establishment of this interactive knowledge system i can see you very beautifully well <laughs> i would like to share with you an interesting experience that i had this week a small girl anukriti her name asked me a question i am trying to find an answer with all of you today what is that kid can ask she asked me rashtrapati ji you can see in my powerpoint you are saying prosperous india will come in 2020 why not by 2010 7 years old girl little anigridi asked this president now this happened few days back in my place how to answer this question i am i am saying to my country that before year 2020 india should become economically a developed nation this kid asked me you accelerate to 2010 that's the echo of my nation friends california university system is well known for its contribution uh, towards high end science and technology research many of the students from our indian institute of technologies as well as other indian universities have been in the california universities as as students similarly many faculty members of the indian institute of technology indian institute of science and other few universities of india or the alumni of california university of system this continuous cross flow of students and faculty between california university system and the indian universities has enriched both side and it has been extended spontaneously between the silicon valley and the indian industry the fact that the two cultures seamlessly merged uh, to move the frontiers of knowledge forward shows the commitment of both our nations to collaborate this mutually beneficial collaboration is the icon of the future wherein we will witness the creation of wealth and prosperity in the global knowledge village by not only by networking of computers for sharing information not only due to the convergence of technology but uh, due to the convergence seamless connectivity of cultures and people in this emerging world we will not only witness universities without walls but also university system that are borderless without the barriers of geography religion and culture as a symbol of universality universalization now when i am with you friends i am presenting certain thoughts on education technology and society i realize intensive cooperation has taken place between indian teams and the university of california san diego during the last two weeks to organize this virtual event in order to make this nation the most advanced knowledge societies we should aim at making the bandwidth available without hindrance at no cost this is what i am preaching my country making the bandwidth available is like the government laying the roads movement of material through these roads creates wealth in the industrial economy and the government recovers more than the investment on the roads by way of taxes and enhanced prosperity of its people in the modern digital economy driven by knowledge products bits and bytes traverse the network and create wealth and this will cover recover the cost of investment in the bandwidth today what we are witnessing what we are witnessing an example 
of making a virtual presence from India to University of California. You can see my PowerPoint. You may see the whiteboard where you can find the network architecture that facilitated today's connectivity between the Rashtrapati Bhavan and the University of California. My greetings to all of you friends. Here, I would like to share with you an experience. The experience how technology does not end where it is. Technology has to go to the people. I have lost a quarter century, have worked in many fields. One student recently, when he was somewhere in the eastern India, asked me a question, Mr. President, can you please tell me which is the event, uh, which is the completion of the pro project which made you very, very happy? A young boy of, of 15 years asked me this question. It's a beautiful question because what made you happy? I like to recall 1980, July, when India launched its satellite launch vehicle, a rocket force state, put a satellite in the orbit. It's a big happiness for me, my team, because I was involved. You can see that. So, and this, uh, when the satellite went to orbit, it was a big happiness. Then I was involved in defense research. When the IRBM, when it reached the target, when it reached the target for 2,000 kilometers, it was a great happiness. We celebrated it. And you can just see that. Similarly, in 1998, same month, a temperature 52 degree Celsius in the desert, when the India became a new human state, India became a nuclear weapon state, then the whole Atlas shrank what we witnessed in that uh, desert. And it was a beautiful feeling that nation, the beautiful feeling the nation has become a nuclear weapon state. That is another great happiness. But I am not satisfying the child when I asked the question, which event gave you happiness? I am going to tell you what is the event made me happy or a bliss. The next stage of happiness is bliss. It's like that. When I was working on a launch vehicle and missile system, we developed a material as a students and professors of this university, your university will know, a carbon-carbon material for re-entry heat shield that when I use the carbon-carbon material, you are still carbon-carbon material, and then a 3 kilogram calipers or FRO, flow reaction orthosis, has become weight, become 300 gram, that is one-tenth. You can see the girl with the FRO calipers, she is riding a cycle. When the parents saw her child, can, cannot move, but with the lightweight FRO and the child, the parents, their beautiful tears they got in their eyes. That was the greatest happiness I had. So, friends, I would like to tell you, technology does not end where it is, unless technology goes to the people. What is important, like the child, that the girl who is going in the cycle, who cannot move with the FRO, flow reaction, orthosis, or calipers. So friends, now I want to tell you about the ambience India. You must know what type of ambience of India today. India is well on its way to become a knowledge society with all-round growth in three sectors of the economy, namely agriculture, manufacturing, and services. Uh, today, we have an opportunity to take the lead in the knowledge revolution, which indeed is the foundation for transcending in India into a developed nation. That means economically developed nation. 
Mission for Developed India has two components. One is poverty removal through economic development. The other is building a value-based society through civilizational heritage. Very important. A beautiful, prosperous society does not come only by economic prosperity. It has to have value system, a spiritual life, a integrated life. That what we are working for. Uh, friends, now with the ascending trajectory of the economy, availability of institution for capacity building of the human resource, abundant biodiversity and other natural resources, and of all, all our 540 million youth who are determined to make our nation prosperous, happy, and a safe place to live, it is definitely possible to realize this vision before 2020. That's India as a developed nation. India is taking the lead in mobilizing and integrating national and international knowledge resources for becoming a part of the global knowledge society. That's how my team, Indian team, with you in your campus. I am with you today to discuss and share my experiences in this area. Now let me start with the first area of discussion on convergence of technology. I realize the India and the University of California has uh, made some uh, integrated plan. I would like to talk to you on converse, convergence of technology. It's very important. Information technology and communication technology have already converged, leading to information and communication technology. You, we all call it ICT. Information technology combined with the biotechnology has led to the bioinformatics, as you all know. Now, nanotechnology is knocking at our doors. It is the field of the future and that will replace microelectronics, many fields with tremendous application potential in the area of medicine, electronics, and material science. When nanotechnology and ICT meet, integrated silicon electronics, photonics are born. It can be said that material convergence will happen. With a material convergence and biotechnology linked, a new science called intelligence bioscience will be born, which could lead to a disease-free, happy, and more intelligent human habitat with a languity and a high human capabilities. Convergence of bio, nano, info technologies can lead to the development of nano robots. Nano robots I witnessed when uh, during my visit uh, in Korea. South Korea, when they are injected into a patient with a particular disease, my expert friends say will diagnose and deliver the treatment exclusively in the affected area, and then the nano robot get digested as it is a nano based product. Friends, let us talk about biotechnology, bioinformatics. The conversion of bioscience and IT into bioinformatics has given the thrust to researchers for genomics based drug delivery and development. Pressure is mounting over the pharma companies to reduce or at least control costs and have a growing need for a new informatics tool to help manage the influx of the data from genomics and turn the data into tomorrow's tricks. This is the major mission for probably for Indian universities and the University of California, San Diego. Indian scientists and technologies have developed biosuit a software package that caters to all aspects of a computational uh, uh, biology from genomics to structure-based track design using publicly known algorithms. Now, another interesting area somewhere in the southern part of India it's happening, that's called gene chip. One of our research centers called the International Center for Biomedical Sciences Technology has developed a gene chip uh, which could be used for finding the existence of genetic diseases, including coronary artery diseases or neuro defect in the baby during the certain stage of pregnancy itself. The chip uh, could also be modified to suggest to the patient system to develop those chemicals which in turn could help the patient recover from the present disease. Recently, one of our biotechnology companies, Biocon in Bangalore, has developed an antibody-based drug for cancer called Biomap EGFR and will be available at a competitive price in the market. Next area, friends, which is known to you, nanotechnology. 
When I think of nanoscience and nanotechnology, molecular nanotechnology has enormous potential for future aerospace system and healthy areas. Research has shown uh, that a newly discovered class of molecules leading to the development of carbon nanotubes that could have multiple application in the area of electronics, uh, particularly nanoelectronics and power system. Carbon nanotubes are normal form of a carbon with remarkable electrical and mechanical properties as the, as the audience know. It is hoped that such material could revolutionize revolutionized electronic design and opened the space frontier for radically lowering the cost of launch to orbit. Now friends, carbon nanotubes reinforced with polymer matrix will result in composite which are super strong, lightweight, small and intelligent structure in the field of material science. Fortunately, both the India and the USA has a collaboration in the material science. This has tremendous aerospace application. Molecular switches and circuits along with nano cell will pave the way for the next generation of computers. Ultra dense computer memory coupled with the excellent electrical performance will result in low power, low cost nano size yet faster assemblies. Now, now, friends, I let me talk to you. Products progress in nanoscience technology in India, some examples, so that your university will be aware what's happening in India. Now, the water nanotube filter water purification, this is one area, some of our university is working. The scientists from Banaras Hindi University have devised a simple method to produce carbon nanotube filters that what you are seeing, that you efficiently remove micro to nanoscale contaminants from water and heavy hydrocarbons from petroleum. The filters are hollow carbon cylinders and several centimeters long, one or two centimeters wide with walls just one third to one half of millimeter thick. They are produced by spraying benzene in a tube-shaped quartz model and holding the mold of 900 C. When I visited, when I visited, when I visited their laboratory, I saw this facility. This is a classic application of the latest in science, nanoscience to solve the age-old problem of water purification. Next one, healthcare typhoid detection kit. Typhoid detection kit has been developed by a defense laboratory using the nano sensor developed by Indian Institute of Science, Bangalore. In India, the morbidity due to the typhoid varies from 102 to 2,200 per 100,000 population in different parts of the country. In some areas, typhoid fever is responsible 2 to 5 percent of deaths. In all India, for routine diagnosis for typhoid disease, Vidal test is performed with single serum sample which does not provide the correct diagnosis of infection. Therefore, a latex acclimation based test has been developed using recombinant DNA technology and immunological technique for rapid diagnosis typhoid infection. This test detects uh, yes, typhi antigen directly in patients serum within one to three minutes, which is very important for initiating early treatment and saving human life. Application of nanotechnology has enhanced, enhanced the sensitivity, sensitivity by 30 times and reduced the requirement of the clinical sample of detection. Friends, a very important contribution and it can be shared between India and the, your university. Now, a research team of University of Delhi has developed 11 patentable technologies for improved truck delivery system using nanoparticles. Four of these processes have been granted U.S. patent. One of the important achievements at the initial stage of truck delivery research was development of a process for the synthesis of hydrogel and smart hydrogel nanoparticles for encapsulating water-soluble trucks. This method enabled one to synthesize hydrogel nanoparticles of size less than 100 nanometer diameter. This technology has been used by an Indian pharma company. Another technology transferred to industry has nanoparticle to, en to encapsulate a nanosteroidal track which improves the bioavailability of track on the surface of the cornea. The technology has also been transferred to another pharma company. Let me discuss an important mission which both our countries are focusing. 
energy for future generation. The World Energy Forum coming here. The World Energy Forum has predicted that fossil-based oil, coal, gas reserve will last for another five to ten decades only. Already it is visible. Hydrogen fuel and use of solar power are the two processing modes to get clean power apart from nuclear power generation. I would like to discuss the research challenges, particularly in the power generation through solar photovoltaic cells using nanotechnology. Carbon nanotube CND based solar cell for higher efficiency. The low efficiency of conventional photovoltaic cell has restricted the use of solar cell for large application of power generation. Contemporary research has shown that alignment of CNT with a polymer composite substrate results in aligned CNT based PV cells giving very high, high efficiency in photovoltaic conversion as a much as 15% laboratory scale. I am sure scientific researchers in India and the University of California will be excited to work in this area of research in partnership with the industries so that we can realize large-scale production of high-efficiency solar cell which will lead to competitive power generation. Now I would like to describe a societal grid which is essential for bringing the connectivity of people towards building the knowledge society with the Indian example. I call it technology-based societal grid. 70% of the 1 million people, 1, 1 billion population of India live in 600,000 villages. To provide quality lifestyle for the people are living in the villages, we have evolved what is called rural development concept called Pura. Pura means providing urban amenities in the rural areas. You may refer my website, www.presidentofindia in .nic.in for details. This, this uh, involves development of a physical connectivity, electronic connectivity, uh, and knowledge connectivity, and uh, uh, to the rural clusters of 20 to 30 villages with a population of around 20,000, 50,000 people leading to economic connectivity. The country will have around 7,000 puras development of technologies and their convergence have significant influence on the society in terms of providing knowledge, health care, governance and the economic development by establishing connectivities between them. These connectivities will certainly bring seamless access and information flow among the various domains leading to maximization of GDP and productivity. Hence, there is a need for establishing the societal grids consisting of knowledge grid, healthcare grid, e-governance grid, and pura, pura grid. This interconnecting grid will be known as societal grid. Knowledge sharing Knowledge utilization, knowledge reuse are very vital for all constituents of the society for um, promoting non-linear growth. You may refer my address to the, the General Assembly of the International Union of Radio Science on 25-10-2005 at New Delhi about the electronic connectivity of for a billion people. We have so far discussed the, all the four connectivities required for the societal transformation of the nation. This is now ripe uh, for the creating the world knowledge knowledge platform uh, for promoting uh, promoting the convergence of core competence of the partnering nations, leading to world class products and system for bringing economic prosperity. I understand your president, University of California, talked about similar line. I have some proposal for you. That is a core presentation, my core presentation for you today. Now, friends, world knowledge platform. When I was uh, during my recent visit to Singapore, Philippines, Republic of Korea, I put forward the concept of world knowledge platform, which will integrate the core competencies of partner countries to develop knowledge products. I am sure scientists and researchers from the United States of America, particularly from the University of California, San Diego, will be keen to participate in this mission. This platform will enable joint design, development, 
cost effective production and marketing of the knowledge products in various domain based on the core competence of two countries three countries four countries now initially the mission of world knowledge platform is to connect and network the r and d institution universities and industries using fiber broadband from the partner nation on selected r and d mission the underground fiber cable infrastructure already exists among many partners as being demonstrated today this global knowledge connectivity will support multitude of seamless connections and supporting both synchronous and asynchronous communication carrying either text or audio or video we can then use this network in the academic environment to teach courses online and share expensive equipments remotely in the industrial en environment it can be used to design complex system even ones that are as complex as an aircraft in a collaborative way using the virtual prototyping concept in the cyber space as usa is collaborating with many countries in india we have today an example of a successful joint venture which harnessed the core competencies of two nation india and russia who have different cultures languages and design as standards the product that has come out of this world class much ahead of the other countries due to the joint working of best of minds from both countries that is bromos one have discussed the details of this program in our book envisioning the empowered nation in the 6th chapter advances in strategic sector which i am referring through rashtrapati bhavan digital library this proves that if the core competencies of nations are combined is very important for the university of california and the indian scientists assembled there if the core competencies are combined and knowledge products are created you will find the a uh, uh, new product of competitive product missions of world knowledge platform now i am putting the proposal for both groups of university of california and my indian team the convergence of bio nano ict is expected to touch every area of concern to the humanity the world knowledge platform will take up missions in some of the areas which are what most urgency to all of us to make our world a safe sustainable and peaceful and prosperous place to live as the child wanted the areas are energy water healthcare agriculture food processing knowledge products in ict transportation sector herbal and natural products and space exploration we may focus in the in the areas of design development leading to productionization for meeting the market demands of the respective countries and also for the world market using the core competence of uh, partner countries the world knowledge platform what i am proposing will also evolve a virtual knowledge park uh, with the participation of collaborating countries which will act as a platform for many innovation to take shape through collaborative research and development leading to a production and marketing for example initially the world knowledge platform uh, can take up the mission such as low cost tablet pc less than 150 dollars embedded electronic system communication and wireless system high efficiency cnd based solar photovoltaic cells research on earthquake forecasting very important it's a challenging for the world just now we saw the earthquake in, uh, in indonesia but we have to forecast that's a big research problem for details you refer my uh, lecture on world knowledge platform during the address of special session of nascom 2006 india leadership forum on 17 february 2006 as mumbai as i have shown you from in short the knowledge platform would be a launch pad for many innovation that are waiting to be unearthed only by combined power of multiple nation and multiple uh, scientific talents development of human resource is a prerequisite for research this is another point i am going to put for you hence i would also like to discuss about the development of a global human resource cadre global human resource cadre what is that global human resource cadre in the 21st century world needs a large number of talented youth 
with higher education for the task of knowledge acquisition, knowledge imparting, knowledge creation, knowledge sharing. At present, India has 540 million youth under the age of below 25, which will continuously be growing till the year 2050. Keeping this resource in mind, the universities and education system in India have to create two cadres of personnel. The first cadre, youth will expertise, youth with expertise and special skills. Second, youth will higher education with research and technology expertise. These two cadres will be required not only for powering the manufacturing and service sector of India, but also will be needed for fulfilling the human resource requirements of various nations. It is essential to increase the throughput of the higher education system from the existing 6% to 20% by the year 2015, 30% by the year 2020, and 50% by the year 2040. Others, others who are not covered by the higher education system will have world-class skill set in areas such as construction, a carpentry, electrical system, repair of mechanical system, fashion design, paralegal, paramedical, accountancy, sales, marketing, software, hardware maintenance, and services, software quality, assurance, personnel, etc. All the youth will have either a world-class higher education or a world-class skill set. University of California can become a partner to this mission. Uh, beginning, beginning through Indo-US education network, through EduSat, we have a satellite app, EduSat, we have to now focus on enhancing this network with more number of universities and institutions. India presently contributes over 400,000 engineers and scientists who are deployed in India and different parts of the world. Now, friends, let me conclude. Let me conclude, conclusion, education, education and the island of peace. A new situation, a conclusion, education and the island of peace. A new situation is emerging globally where generation after generation, the comforts levels of the people are, has becoming better and better. In the midst of this ever increasing betterment of lifestyle, there is a lingering uncertainty and insecurity. This fear of However, subtle in each one of us has the characteristics of a snowball, snowballing into insecurities between nations and cultures. The economically developed societies and the economically developing societies both are haunted by problems unique to each other. The question is, under these circumstances, how we build a prosperous and peaceful society in the planet Earth? In the knowledge era, economic development is directly controlled by the knowledge development. Any economic divide would be a direct consequence of a knowledge divide. Can education provide a path and hope for smoothening that knowledge divide? When you go up the ladder of prosperity, a never-ending monotonous quest of the man, mankind, the role of education and universalization is to reduce the knowledge barrier between nations. Are we doing that? In this connection, I remember when I presented to my parliament a few verses. I said, I, I climbed and climbed. Where is the peak, my lord? I plowed and plowed. Where is the knowledge treasure, knowledge treasure my lord? I, my, I sailed and sailed. Where is the island of peace, my lord? Can the California University system and the Indian universities of 300 universities work together, set the examples of ways and means by which education can help us to reach the peak, locate the knowledge treasure, and to live in the land of peace? My best wishes to the participant, participants of US-India Summit in their mission of broadening areas of engagement uh, to include new research trust for promoting excellence in education, research, and technology in different parts of the globe. So my best wishes for all, all of you. God bless you.